Seven, six, five. Everybody tuning in. I'm actually getting started a little earlier than I thought I would be tonight. This is video number two on radio technology. What you may hear in the background, and it's going to be a stretch to hear it. It's really, really low. We're going to see what we can do about that. But you may hear what sounds like radio, loosely-ish. I've got the first crystal set working. Uh, it's what we call the Boy Scout radio. Going back to the last video, I introduced this series of videos that I'm creating about radio technology. And the first thing we did was we started building what's called Boy Scout radio. That's kind of the dumbest, most crappiest crystal radio ever created. <laughs> um, but it's the building block upon which we're going to learn about other stuff and we couldn't get any sound out of it what I found was one we needed an aerial I did not have enough wire in the air catching RF two we needed a solution for audio I was having a problem in that you couldn't hear anything coming off the radio I had a little amplifier module a little Adafruit you know, two and a half watt amp plugged into a breadboard and I had an audio signal going to it, but we couldn't hear anything. I discovered that that amplifier is broken. That's why we weren't getting any sound out of it. Since that time, I picked up a high impedance, like 3,000 ohms pair of headphones, hook them up, and I get ever so quiet an AM radio signal. It's right around 1500 kilohertz is my strongest signal, but I'm actually getting a bunch of signals. The tuning is very broadbanded, and that I'm hearing whatever's loud and nearby. There's no real selectivity to the radio. 
So what I'm hoping to do tonight is continue experiments with the Boy Scout Crystal Radio. Now, I've, I've taken a piece of wood and cut it down. We're going to use it as a mounting platform for the radio. I've made a couple of Z brackets, and I've got the coil screwed down to the board. And it's actually hooked up, and, and what you're hearing behind me is a little bit of audio coming off of it. Now, I know it probably sounds terrible. It's going to for now. But I just wanted to demonstrate that, yes, in fact, we are receiving something on nothing more than a coil of wire and a diode. That's it. It's working. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to change camera views a little bit here and reposition myself to get in a place where we can keep working on this. So let's go ahead and get that all started. Let's see, the overhead camera's off. We'll have to turn it on, but I can transition the scene to here. And you should still be hearing me. Yep, looks good. So let me mosey on over there. And we'll see what we can make happen tonight. So let's get this party started. Let me turn this other camera on. That should come to life. Hopefully it does. Let's see what we can do here. My camera setup is just giving me a lot of problems. Let's see. Back it over here. Overhead. Deactivate. Activate. All right, cool. That's better. And we'll swing it over here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I'm using and what you guys were hearing. These headphones right here, they look kind of gross, don't they? That's old rubber ear cups. But these are new old stock headphones. They say H-43B slash U. These are high impedance headphones. And they actually have a B and C connector on the end of them. This is some sort of military surplus. And here, I'll show them to you under the bigger, the bigger screen. But they're 3,000 ohms. I mean, look at that shiny metal. I mean, they, they look old, but they're not. They're new old stock. The rubber looks gross because this is what they call bloom. All that white powdery looking stuff. It's not mold-ish. It's a lot of the materials that were used in the vulcanization process working their way to the surface. So you can pop them in some water and scrub and they'll come clean. And I'll, I'll end up getting these clean more as we go. But I'm going to put these headphones on for a second. Yeah, it's, it's super, super quiet. It's like the quietest thing I could possibly hear and still be hearing something. But it's there. So with this we can work with this. Now, I started trying to create an amplifier that would be loud enough or that would make that signal loud enough for us to all hear it. And I've had no real success. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to focus my attention on that a little bit and see if we can actually get to where we can make this signal loud enough that we can take a good listen to it. Um, even with even with nothing being able to be heard, we can always throw something on the scope and look at it. But let me get this area cleaned up here a little bit. And we'll look at digging into this amplifier. Now, there's two amplifiers. Let me move the microphone here a little bit to make it not so prone to me banging on it and being super obnoxiously loud. So there are two um, amplifiers here that I tried to build. This is the first one right here, this little doo-wopper. Let's get tight on that. This right here. It was built to hold an LM386. Very popular audio amplifier module. Very crappy audio amplifier module, but very popular. And, you know, the LM386 is one of those building block 
components. It's something that everybody should have and probably does have. And anything you build with it, you're going to hide from the world and never admit took place. It's kind of like riding a moped, right? It's fun until your friends find out. So, this is the second amplifier I built. Here's the problem. I tried to build stuff small and then I screw it up and then I'm like, ah! and I didn't want to troubleshoot it and this really wasn't the right breadboard to use. So I built the circuit again here on this board. So it's an LN386 configured for 200 times gain. Now it was configured for 200 times gain. I clipped this capacitor out. We'll be hooking it back up probably as we troubleshoot this thing. But basic LN386, 200 times gain, and I'm hoping that that's just enough to enable us to hear the radio signal over a small little 8 ohm speaker. Nothing crazy here. This is just building block level stuff. Now let me pull this out, not that way, this way, and show you what we're dealing with and what state this radio is currently in. Now again, I call this the Boy Scout radio. This design was published in a lot of Boy Scout magazines and a lot of people have built these things. And this is super, super crude. We've not even finished constructing it on the board. We're gonna do that tonight. Um, but really all you're looking at is a piece of wood, the same coil that we wound before on a couple of brackets bolted to the board. It just makes it a little easier to experiment with. But that's all that I've done. I wanted to save the rest for the stream. So let me clean some stuff up here, get myself some room and ability to move around and function, and we'll see about taking this forward. Now truthfully, everything you're seeing here, this is a working radio. So antenna comes in, I'm looking to see which side is which. Uh, the antenna is the yellow wire coming over here. Okay, antenna comes in here, right? This is the top of the coil. You can see where I sanded it for our selector, um, our tuning stick or wiper, if you will, to contact. But it's not even hooked up right now. We're just using the whole coil. Coming out of the back end of the coil is the ground. So think of everything on the left as ground, and everything on the right as being our, you know, our audio level. So. Audio hits the top of the coil, or I'm sorry, antenna hits the top of the coil. I've also got this transistor, right? Not transistor, diode, a germanium diode right there. The germanium diode, its job is to turn that RF into AF, the radio frequency into audio frequency. So it's rectifying the signal, it's detecting the signal, if you will. And then we're simply tapping in the output of that and the other end of ground. That's it. That's the whole circuit. And you're hearing some music. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I want to get an amp going so you guys can hear this a little bit better. Now, like I mentioned before, this is a very broad banded type of thing. You don't have a lot of selectivity. You're not tuning in stations. You're just hearing a bunch of overlapping stations that are just coming across the air. They just happen to be there and you're hearing them. Um, mine threw me off because it was advertising an FM call sign. It happens to be an AM rebroadcasted local FM station or an FM rebroadcasted local AM station. Same kind of deal where it, uh, you know, it's doing that thing. But once I realized what it was, we kind of figured out what was going on. So speaker and amplifier. So we're going to try to get this amp working. So I'm going to take the radio for now and set it aside. More on that as we continue building it tonight. But I want to see if we can get ugh, this amplifier working. So let's talk a little bit about what we've got here. Let's go in tight on that. Boom. All right. Like I mentioned, this is an LM386 audio amplifier IC. Everybody's got them. I've got a box full of them. It has a 
potentiometer, a 10K pot, maybe it's a 100K pot, I think it's a 10K pot, on the input, tied between the audio input and ground. So it's a volume controller, an input level controller. We adjust the input level. The output from the wiper of the, of the potentiometer goes into the LM386. The LM386 requires minimum support circuitry. So there's uh, one, one or two capacitors, three capacitors. It depends on your amplification configuration. Um, a resistor, that's basically it. Give it power, you know, between 4 and 14 volts, I think, is its spec. And, you know, you're amplifying it. Now, I had it set up in a 200 times gain, and I was having problems. I was having a lot of noise on the input. In fact, this potentiometer is probably junk, so we may put a, a smarter, better little potentiometer on there and see if we can get better results out of this thing. But uh, that's the basic circuit. Now, if I, if I add this little 10 microfarad capacitor between pins 1 and pin 8, I go from the basic circuit of 20x gain up to 200x gain. So I clipped it out. We're configured as 20 now. We'll play with it. We're probably going to go back to 200 because we need we need some significant boost for signal on this. But let's see if we can get this little baby LM386 working. And we might even have to pull out the old Arduino to generate a tone to throw into this thing to amplify to see if we can make it loud because I, I don't have a lot of audio reference sources. We'll see where we go and what we, what we use for those sources. It could be anything. But All right, so... Fixing the LM386 amp. I'm pretty sure this potentiometer sucks. So I'm going to start by putting a better pot on there. But before I do that, I'm going to pull up the circuit diagram so you guys can see what a schematic looks like for this thing. So LM386. Okay, cool. So what you're looking at here is a typical diagram of an LM386 with 200x gain. Close. Okay, cool. So you've got power in to VS. They're showing 18 volts here, and then they've got a bypass capacitor to ground. So that's probably a little bit of noise filtering there. We've got pin 2 and pin 4 on the LM386 going to ground. They're running an input resistor here on the audio signal. Uh, they're not using a pot. They're using a fixed configuration there, but I like to use a potentiometer because it gives me the ability to tune the input. We've got an output capacitor over here on the right, 220 microfarad. That's just a large bulk cap. Basically, that's that's a blocking cap that prevents AC from going to the speaker. I think that's right. Or does it prevent DC from going to the speaker? That's it. It prevents DC from going to the speaker. That's called a DC blocking cap. It allows AC through and blocks DC. Because after all, the coil doing its thing, it's audio, which is you know, an AC signal. Um, I don't know what the hell R1 does, but we run through a resistor and capacitor to ground. The C2 up here, this is what gives you that 200x gain. If you omit that, then it's basically just a, uh, a 20x gain. So that's what we've built, essentially, on the board. So we're going to do a little troubleshooting, figure out why this circuit is not working. Um, but we're going to start by putting up potentiometer in there that doesn't suck. Um, let's see. They're doing a fixed value of 1K. I'm going to look at a couple other schematics because, yeah, 10K. I'm going to use a 10K pod in there. I've got, I've got this assortment right here of these things. 
they suck. So I'm not gonna use those tonight. We're gonna go into something a little, little bit better. Not great, but a little better. it wired into this LM386 circuit. Up instead of that. So Alex 
Alexa, turn on my soldering iron. I think I forgot and left it on before, so I may have to cycle it. Alexa, turn off my soldering iron. There it goes. Alexa, turn on my soldering iron. There we go. That worked. So yeah, I left it on last time. Bad me. Okay, so the center wiper of this potentiometer. Let's switch over to the schematic here. The center wiper of the potentiometer is going to go to this pin 3, this audio. And in fact, you can see it on the left hand side here. And then the other side is going to go to ground. And then the audio input to the other wiper. Now I'm going to do a measurement. Once I get the output wired up, I'm going to do a measurement and find out which side should go to ground so that I decrease the resistance as I turn it clockwise. Because, you know, I don't want it to be backwards. I want it clockwise to be up and counterclockwise to be down. So we'll do that. But first we're going to pull this other one out of here because it's crappy. In fact, I don't even pull it out of there. I just cut it out of there because we're not going to desolder it. So cut it out. Cut it out! A really bad day of cooling day. Alright, cool. So let's bring this in again to here. Bring it in tight and you can see what we've done. So we took that and we removed it. So I'm going to desolder what I need to here to get it out of my way and then we'll run these connections over to this new potentiometer. So bring it wide. And you guys can watch what's going on. Fall off the bench onto the floor, as things tend to do here. Not 
yourself seen on the ground. Right. sponsored but I love these Nipix strippers. They work so good. They're so expensive for wire strippers. But oh my god, they're worth it. So much worth it. me boy I will get the flux out when I make a mess of that wire melting the crap out of it fine Brr, flux Why is this being such a pain in the ass? Probably because I'm trying to do it on camera. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to get a little mechanical stability in there. And then worry about the sovereign. So let's try to get this in here. Bring it up like that. Let's see if it'll bend for me. I wish I could say I haven't had this much trouble soldering something in a long time, but that'd be a lie. Sometimes you just get shit that's moody. Alright, let's see what we get there. Alright, we got it that time. Cool. So that's our center. So now, I'm going to trim that up a little bit. No, I can't, because I don't have the snips. Where are my snips at? That's a big no. A big nerf. 
Let me walk to the other desk and make sure I didn't move them and that's why I can't find them. It's entirely possible that I did that. Yeah, that's what I did. They're over here. No wonder I couldn't find them. They weren't where I left them because I moved them. Okay. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Alright, so next thing we need to do is I'm going to measure this out a little bit. I want to measure it so that I know which direction increases and decreases resistance so that we can make it nice, friendly, clockwise, counterclockwise. Okay. So I'm going to put my meter on the ohms setting. You guys maybe can see the meter when we do this. There's the ohms setting. And I'm just going to take a measurement on this thing. I'll flip it over. Take a measurement where it is. So between that and the top, it's oops, let's go select. This is 6k. I'm gonna turn it right, and I'm gonna measure it again. This is 1k. All right. So as I turn it to the right, this reduced, and this should have gone up to like 10. Yeah. All right. So that tells me that this is going to get lower as I turn clockwise. That's perfect. So this is what I want my input to be. And this needs to go to ground. Awesome. So we're going to wire that up to the ground. That's our next one. And then once we take that to ground, then we'll go and uh, Bring the other one to the audio input. Okay, cool. So this is going to be the one that goes to ground. So we got a little mechanical going on there. That's a little flux. And let's see if we can solder this one a little friendlier this time. For those of you just joining, you're watching a video that's part of a series on radio technology. I'm building various designs of crystal radios and then eventually some more advanced stuff and showing you why, how they work, why they work, why many of the designs don't work, and we'll slowly learn to build things that suck less and less. All right, so we said they'd be ground. Ground is the bottom of that. Okay. So ground, one of the bottom ones. Yeah, okay. So we take it there and be fine. Just remember bottom. Okay. So we're gonna throw this in the hole on the bottom. And solder that up. That'll give us the ground connection. I'm working on an LM386 audio amplifier that I hope is going to help us as we experiment with these crystal radios be able to share what it sounds like with you guys on the stream. Um, I have other solutions for amplification, but this is something I had laying on the bench. So. So yeah, so we're getting there. So whoop, 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 whoop. Now I need to connect the input to the remaining pin. Now the input let's see. The input I said is this brown wire. And it's already going to a do do walkie there. So we're just gonna take a jumper and jump it from where it was to where it needs to go. So here's where we need to start. Actually, I can do it from the underside here. There's where it needs to start. So let's go ahead and solder that. What do you think it fell out of the hole it did? Let me fix that. 
to this audio unit, which is the middle one. Oh, it's over here. I'm getting this thing fixed and I'll put it back on camera. Nope, over one more. Okay. So this wire. Set this down. Fire this in. Got it. Alright. So that's one end. This is some pretty ugly prototype in here, if I do say so myself. And we'll bring it to the remaining pin on the potentiometer. I'm hoping that this potentiometer replacement solves one of the problems I was having. With this circuit. Okay, that almost works. Let's try to bend this at a little 90 here. Get that in there, and it'll kind of hold itself in place as we prepare to solder it. So, the other possible problem, well, like I said, this. This is configured in a 200X, or was configured in a 200X gain configuration, but I disconnected. I clipped the lead on the capacitor because I was having problems. I wanted to see if 20X would help me. So we'll probably end up putting that back. So hopefully between those two things, we get a good working amplifier. All right, cool. So that's good. There's our amp. So let me give you another little tour. So what we've got is we've got... Uh, VN, 5 volts I'm saying here, but it could be like up to 15. The audio in, in the center, that's kind of come straight off my diode and ground. So this this is kind of connection to the earth and the antenna. Up here, speaker out, plus and minus, my atom speaker. Now I'm turning my attention right now to the little capacitor that I put in it to give us a, hundred, or a 200x gain. And I'm going to desolder that real quick, just to clean things up. Let's see, this side's attached, yeah. Just to clean things up. And then we'll put a new one in. Cool, that one's out. We get the little wire out of there. It'll be in a little better place. like I mostly got it. A tiny little clean up here. Good enough. Good enough. Alright. Loosen this up. Get it out of the way. Awesome. That should do it. I'm still a little bit in there. Let's see, let's bring this back out a little bit. It's not super critical, but I try to get the garbage out of my way when I can. All right, so we're gonna put another, actually, you know what, I'm gonna start with the like this. This is a 20X game. Let's see what happens on that. And then we'll worry about throwing it into something else. So first thing I need is an 8 ohm speaker. I have, or had one, yep, here it is, Ugh, falling off the desk. So we'll hook that little speaker. It's 
Speaker minus, speaker plus. These need to be longer. Let me strip these leads a little longer. Even a little bit longer than that. There we go. Okay. So we're going to hook up speaker plus and speaker minus. Alright, sweet. So that gives us our 8 ohm speaker. Let's give this thing some power and see what happens. Let's see if we get anything off of it. And then we'll worry about the input side. So we've got VCC to here. And we've got ground to here. So let's give this thing some power. Okay. Kind of funny, right? I was having that problem before. I don't know if we have an oscillating issue with the LM386 or what. But that's what it's doing. So we'll, we'll work on that. Let's try to throw some audio into this and see what we get out of it. So I have that little crystal doohickey. Alexa, turn off the soldering iron. We'll bring it out and we'll look at it. We'll throw it up here. And I'm just going to take the output right here, this diode, and throw it to the input. And let's see if we're able to get any audio out of this. It's there. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's there. Yeah, here we go. start so we have we have a crappy little amplifier here oh that's even clearer there we got let me see if I can make it any louder now it needs more gain all right so this is what we're gonna do since we know it needs more gain let's put that other capacitor in it and take from 20x gain to 200x gain. We might not be able to hear it. It might turn so sensitive that we can't get anything off of it. But let's see what happens. And it also could be that I've just got problems with my amp. But, I don't know. Alexa, turn on the soldering iron. So this is just simple. Tie pin 1 to pin A. So pin 1 gets the positive sign. Pin 8 gets the negative sign, so that one to that one. Yeah. 
That should work. If you've never built an LM386 audio amp, it's something you ought to do. Just for the sake of what it is, you know? For those of you just tuning into the stream, my name's Josh, this is Project Blue Smoke Monster, and we are doing some crystal radio experiments. I've built the beginning of what I call Boy Scout, or what a lot of people call Boy Scout crystal radio. Uh, just a coil, an aerial wire, and a ground connection, and a um, germanium diode as a detector. And we're trying to get an amplifier circuit working here so that you guys can hear the signal that's being received. Now the radio itself does not use any power. I am receiving signals and hearing them on an appropriate high impedance headphone with no external power. This thing's powered by the RF over the air. The only thing we're applying power to here is an amplifier so you guys can hear it. That's just for the sake of the video. Alright, that should work. Let's turn this on and see what we can do. <laughs> something in there and see what happens. I think it has to do with stabilizing it. Maybe it's this oscillation issue we're hearing. I have no idea. But I'm curious. So we'll have to add another capacitor. Positive side on pin 7 to ground. Which is those. Right there. That should be real easy to solder in, actually. I don't even have to flip the board upside down. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not. Maybe. Okay, that should do it. And the LM386 this is a crappy little chip. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is not like a great amp. This is crap, but it's supposed to be easy. Here goes. can be causing that. Let's figure out audio plus and minus. Two and three. Yeah, because two is ground. 
3 is the audio signal. 10K looks to be the popular value. I mean, that looks pretty standard. Let's do this. LM3, 6. Squealing. Let's see what the Googles tell us. Massive noise on your LM386. The high frequency squeal, I learned, is feedback. Okay. Feedback between the speaker and the microphone, but there is no microphone. Ah, this Reddit post sounds familiar. Try replacing the 10 nanofarad cap with a 1K resistor. <coughs> I'm not sure what that's about yet. Problems with the basic LN386 circuit. Okay, I like the way that sounds. We get a loud buzz out of the speaker, yep. Supply bypass caps. Okay, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Alright, let's start with something simple. Let's swap the chip. Let's make sure that I don't have a bad LM386. Um, I couldn't even tell you that these things aren't counterfeit. Who the hell knows? So let's start with that. New chip. Uh, where's my LM386 been? Got it. Nope. Yeah, got it. Alright. Bucket full of 386s. First thing I'm going to do is pull the old chip and power it up and see if it squeals with no chip. Certainly shouldn't. But I'm going to do it. Here goes. Okay. It does not squeal with no chip. Let's put a new chip in. Looks good. Turn it on. Same squeal, but we'll play with the pot and see what happens. That's just wild. Okay. Let me see if all my LM386s are the same. Or if I have any that look different. same to me. So, okay. So let's assume that the real. Um, what else? What else? Um, high frequency bypass capacitor. Let's try something like that. Let's put a, put a cap on it. If you like it, then you should have put a cap in it. We 
we're going to put this between the power pins on the LM386. So between pin 6 and 4. So 4 to 6. Okay, ground. Good, 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 good. Just power. Oh, power's off. Good. Let's see. 4 and 6. And I'm going to do this right up at the chip. Because you want bypass caps for this purpose to be really close. That's gonna be the wrong pin if I do that, mister. Better pay attention to where you're shoving stuff. Four and six. Almost put it in the wrong hole. Four, five, six. That would have bypassed the wrong thing. Find it, it might be too hot. Let's see if any 1K is within reach here. Nope. We'll get into the big box. I mean, that pot, that's a 10K pot. I mean, I could put a bigger pot on it. I could put a 100K pot on it. But let's let's start with just putting like a, an extra 1K or something on the input and see if it makes any difference, just in series. This has an extra 1K. Let's see what happens. Alright, 
right, here's my theory. My theory is that 200 times gain is simply too much gain. I'm going to clip this cap out again, and I'm going to try it without it and see what happens. I can hear it already. Okay. Now we're getting there. Try this again with this. And this. I can hear it. I wonder if 10K is too big. Maybe I want a smaller pot. Maybe that's too much resistance. Maybe I want like a 1K pot. I don't know, but you guys are probably hearing that. Let me try to get it closer. the best amplifier in the world, but then again, it's just an LM386. I'm going to kick the voltage up again. That's 5 volts. That's 12 volts. Let's try it. Pretty much exactly the same thing. Alright, so the verdict is the LM386 sucks. Alexa, turn off the soldering iron. So the LM386 sucks. So that's the verdict of the first test. <laughs> but, you know, it was cool to build. Let me throw a picture of it on here before we call it completely stupid. And, and it could be that variations on the circuit work better, but just not the one I built. So. There you go. Yay. Meh. Wonder what else I got in the way of audio amplifiers. Let me check the parts bin. I know there's some stuff over here. Uh, that was a little SMD part. That might be a little challenging to work with. I got some op amps. Um. I could build a push pull amplifier. Anybody want to do that? <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see what the uh, Googles have to say. Simple crystal radio audio amplifier. I mean, everybody's talking LM386. But this thing just sucks. Okay. Ooh, here's something. What do we got here? A one transistor amplifier. Yeah, see, so this has got the 1N34, so that's your signal diode. Coming into a 2N4401. Yeah, I mean, there's that. Let's see what else we can find. My real question is, why does everybody go to the LM386 by default, and I'm just having hella luck with it? Q1, here we go. What are they using here? NPN silicon general purpose transistor. Really? Ah, yeah, they're wanting a uh, 
high and high impedance speaker for that one. I don't have a matching transformer. Uh, and this is crazy. I mean, it's like what the hell? Everybody's just doing. So there's an LM386 with nothing on it. So this is the uh, the circuit we were using. Except we had one and eight connected together. So this is a 20x amplifier. So two and four to ground. I'll put on thought. Ooh. Well, that's something. Hang on. That's something. The polarity of that output capacitor is different than what I was using. I think this is wrong, though. I think this drawing's wrong. Because every other LM386 circuit that I see has the positive side of the capacitor. Yeah, facing the output. Yeah, this is this is an error in the drawing. It's gotta be. There's something funny about this picture. One transistor audio amplifier. It's a speaker connected to an Arduino with a resistor. <laughs> I don't even know what they're getting at there, but that's just hilarious. Um, I don't want to get into the three transistor amp. That's more than I want to deal with. BC547. I might have one of those. Let me see. BC547. There's a BC 557 PNP. Let me look at my assortment of BJTs and see what I've got. and have to play that game tonight. Okay, there's one. That's doable. 2N3904, really. Okay, we can try that one. Let's try to build an audio amp out of a 3904. Alright, so... This will mostly be a dead bug design here. Um... Why the hails not? That, that, and that. Pull it apart. There's that, that, and that. Okay. I'm going to show you the little board I'm going to use. This is the little board we're going to use. There's the 2N3904 on the board. And we're just going to follow this circuit right here. <coughs> Let's see. I need the 2N3904 data sheet. Pin 1 is the emitter. E, base collector, C, E, C, B, E, okay. Help me remember C, B, E on this thing. Collector, base, emitter. All right. Seems reasonable. 
emitter goes to ground. Okay, so that's ground. That's easy. We like ground. The output of the speaker goes to ground. Let's solder some wires on here. Speaker output right there. Solder that to right there. Alexa, turn on the soldering iron. Switch views here. Boom. So we're going to do right here. That right there. So for those of you just tuning in, this is Josh with Project Blue Smoke Monster. We are continuing to work on our crystal radio experiments tonight. I am trying to amplify the signal enough that you guys can hear it. So what I've done is the previous stream, we wound a coil, and we hooked it up, and we couldn't hear anything. So I've done some troubleshooting. One, I had a bad amplifier, uh, audio amplifier. So we're trying to come up with something to deal with that. Two, I didn't have enough wire in the air. didn't have a big enough antenna. I fixed the antenna part, and listening to the coil through a high impedance set of headphones these do loppies right here I can hear an AM station actually I can hear two AM stations together at the same time because this thing's so broadbanded on its tuning but that's a start so now I'm trying to amplify the signal so you guys can hear it better we built an LM386 we had problems with we did some troubleshooting, we had problems with it. We really never got it working satisfactorily. Just for giggles and shits. Now, I've got some more amps coming tomorrow, so there's some other options. And some of them are 386 circuits, but the things that should just work out of the box, we'll see. Um, those aren't the only options. But we're trying to build a little NPN transistor audio amplifier. I have no idea whether this is just going to work at all. But it's an experiment to try, so I'm trying it. This is a little... Is it NPN? I think it's an NPN. Yeah, that's an NPN. 2N3904. A little bipolar junction transformer. BJT. And we're starting to build a little sweet kit. So we got that. Now, um, 5 volt, 6.8 ohms. We need a 6.8 ohm resistor. Where's my resistor box? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Where's my resistor box? Where, oh, where did my resistor box go? It's somewhere in this messy ass room. Uh, seriously, I just had it out. Seriously, there it is. Alright, what's that say? 6.8 ohm? Yeah, 6.8 ohm. Oh, 10 ohm, probably good enough. Let's see. Six point eight oh, got it. And let's pull the resistor out. And we'll get it wired in. I, I don't have a lot of hope for this, but it's like last ditch effort, why not? Amp to try to get running for tonight. And it's only like four parts, so six point eight ohms. Dropping stuff everywhere. Doesn't help. Alright. Let me put this on the board. That's coming out the base. No. The collector. And then up to the battery. So we'll just leave it hanging. Start it right there and leave it hanging. Because that's where we'll give it plus 5 volts. Solder this one. Cool. Coolio. Got it. Alright. Now, what else we need? 
we need a one microfarad capacitor, ceramic capacitor ish coming off of that. So we'll find it. One UF, bingo, 105. I got a non polarized um, multi layer ceramic chip capacitor we're going to put on here. So we're going to put that right here, kind of like this. And that's going to connect to the speaker. So you have the transistor, a resistor, and the capacitor. I like the simplicity of the circuit. It's probably going to be parallel with how well it works, which is probably not <laughs> going to work. It's okay. I'm okay with not going to work. We're just experimenting. All right, then that's the other output. That'll go to the speaker, so we're going to put a wire on it and solder together. The speaker out. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Alright, excellent. Then what else do I need? I need a 220 ohm input resistor. So let's grab that out of the resistor box. I'm gonna pan out while I'm doing this so you guys can see the, the coil for the crystal radio. I got it mounted on some brackets that I just kind of folded over and screwed to a board. Nothing fancy, but it holds it off the surface. You don't ever want the coils to be coming in contact with the base. You kind of want the thing floating a little bit, so that's, there's there's room under here. I don't have high hopes for this tran one transistor amplifier. Particularly because I don't know a lot about transistors as amplifiers, so my ability to troubleshoot this is like non-existent. All right, that's input. Fold that down, solder those on. There we go. I feel like if I needed to like build something in a post-apocalyptic fashion, you know, gotta scavenge a thing and build a radio. I wouldn't be the guy that does it in 15 minutes. I'd be the guy that like needs to live there for three years, growing potatoes on Mars, and then finally someday I'd get a one transistor amplifier to work. <laughs> All right, so that's ground. All right, so we're ready to try to tie this speaker to this. Um, I'm just gonna solder together. Good enough for what we're doing here. It's probably not gonna work anyway. All right, positive output, negative. Wire these suckers up. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Got it. And then we'll do the next one. This is terribly ugly. <laughs> Horrible assembly skills on this one. Holy Moses, Batman. Okay. Got it, got it, that's ground, so we're going to give it ground, VCC, let's see, that's, what is that, at the top of the transistor, yeah, I don't even remember where the hell that goes, <laughs> top of the transistor, collector,
Resistor. Alright, I'm confused. Oh, I'm backwards. It's, I'm looking at it upside down. <laughs> so I just took that to the wrong place. Now I understand why things don't make sense. They're upside down. Let's fix that. That's an easy fix. That's why you don't use orange for ground. Get up there. Solder them together. Oh, it came apart on me. Get over there. Come on. There we go. All right, so here's what we got coming together. So that's ground. This is going to be five volts. This is going to be, that was the output. So I wired the output to the wrong place too. <laughs> Figures. And luckily it comes apart easy. All right, that's an output. This is an output. Tie them together. There are the outputs together. Alright. So, we've got input this here. We'll apply power and be good. Okay, cool. So, power. Power's going to come from this. This is ground, so we'll bring ground right down here to this other crappy solder joint of mine. And just kind of twist all this junk together. Okay. And then give it a blob of melt. And then VCC is going to be on the resistor. So we'll put that here. Almost ready to smoke test it. Is anybody else secretly hoping this catches fire? I mean, because, you know. At least that'd be fun. Connected, it is connected. Okay, so really the only thing left is audio in. So I'm going to take the audio in from the diode. Once I locate the diode again, let's see. Is it on this? Yep, got it. We'll bring it to here, tie it together, and let's see what happens. <laughs> Alright, so single transistor. audio amplifier. Here goes. We'll go VSET 5. Power it on. Ground. Yeah. VCC. Audio out. Audio in. <laughs> didn't do shit. <laughs> Color me shocked. Color me shocked. Oh. Well, I think this is what we're going to do tonight. 
we are going to assume that there is an error in the Allen 386 circuit that I made. But let's assume that it's possible that it could work. Tomorrow I have some more audio amplifier modules coming in that are pre-built that I would just wire up and use. So that would take out any error from just my construction on the breadboard from the 386. Let's try one of those and see what happens. I think I have a couple of other types of amplifiers coming to you. At least one other type, I think. I didn't pay tons of attention to what I ordered, but I went to for a couple different variations on a theme. So we'll do that and see what happens. I mean, ultimately, I just want to get you guys to hear the thing. Once we get it so you can hear it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to separate the amplifier for presentation and the radio. Um, we kind of draw that line. Then we'll be able to, uh, to demonstrate the differences between these. But for now, here's where we're going to leave it. Our coil is mounted on a board. This works with these high impedance headphones. And again, if you want to pick up a pair of these, they're on eBay right now for like 20 bucks. H-43B slash U. They look gnarly, but this is this is fine. This isn't gross. It, it just looks like it on camera. It's just bloom on the rubber, but they're in really great shape. They suck to wear, but like the plastic's intact. These are a stupid good deal for 20 bucks. Buy one. Seriously, buy one. Um, I'm going to buy another one, and I don't even need to. Plus, they come in an old school box that just smells cool. I think the box smells like 1970. Doesn't have any markings on it, but you know, whatever. So that's it, I think, for tonight. Let's keep playing with crystal radios. See if we can inch this thing along and uh, be able to listen to something soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Tell me what you're experimenting with, and uh, we'll see you later.